read so many books this month it's honestly like unbelievable <laughs> hello everyone my name is frankie and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing my july wrap up i read a ton of books this month and i am super proud of myself for that fact like i really have been kind of slow with my reading recently so when i kind of tallied up all the books i read and I realized it was this many I was like wow okay good for me like I really did that I'm really excited to go through all of the ones that I did read this month with you guys um, I'm going to try to be brief in my explanations of what the books are about and what I thought about them because there are a lot of books and I don't want this video to drag on for like an hour <laughs> Um, even though there is a ton of stuff I could say about these. For a lot of them, I have more of my coherent thoughts on Goodreads, so you can check out my Goodreads links in the description if you want to see what I thought more specifically of some of these books. So this month I read 14 books. I read um, four YA contemporaries. I'm looking at my list over here or I'll forget. <laughs> four YA contemporaries, one YA dystopian, three graphic novels slash manga, um, two plays, two short story collections, one classic, and one adult fantasy. I had a really good reading month um, this month, not just in the like large amount of books that I read, but also in the ratings that I gave a lot of the books I read. I had a lot of four stars, a lot of five stars this month. So that was also really nice. It was nice to have like a month of reading things that made me happy and that I had a good time reading. Okay, let's get started in actually talking about the books. So the first book I read this month was Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Moldovsky. Um, I talked a little bit about this book in my um, mid-year freakout tag, I think. But this is basically a YA contemporary about these four friends who are like mega huge fans of this super popular boy band that's kind of a stand-in for One Direction. So they are such big fans that they basically get a room in the same hotel that they know the boy band is going to be staying in. And one of the friends um, sees one of the members of the boy band in the um, hotel hallway and she basically kidnaps him and takes him back to the room that she's sharing with the rest of the girls. And from there, like, things just get totally crazy and, um, like, fly off the handle. So I gave this book four stars. This was a reread for me. I read it a while ago, back in middle school, I think, and I wanted to see if it held up. It definitely did hold up. Um, I had so much fun reading this book. It's basically this, like, dark comedy, so it's really fun to read. It's really satirical in a lot of places, and I really enjoyed that. As somebody who spent a lot of her middle school time in fandoms um, i could really relate to the characters maybe i wouldn't go as extreme as they did in like kidnapping their faves <laughs> i really liked this book and liked that sort of fandom aspect and um, i love the dark comedy of it too the next book i read is um who's afraid of virginia wolf by edward alby this is a play about this um older married couple um, who are sort of struggling with their marriage and with each other and after this like dinner party that they have for the university they work at um, they invite over this younger couple for like drinks and they sort of the older couple is kind of forced to like publicly confront their issues with each other in front of this younger couple as they get progressively more and more drunk throughout the night this is like a pretty classic play that a lot of people have heard about and a lot of people praise and that's for good reason i gave this play four stars um i really loved reading it i had a i read it really quickly too even though it's kind of thick for a play i love sort of sit down character study plays like this one where not a lot of stuff happens necessarily but it's mostly focused on um characters and those characters interacting with each other and talking to each other everything also about this play is just really engaging even though there, like i said there's not a ton of things that are necessarily happening physically um, but I still was really engaged and really entertained throughout the entire story. The next book I read in the month of July was Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams by Sylvia Plath. This is a collection of short stories, essays, and um, journal entries that Sylvia Plath wrote in like the few years before she committed suicide. I gave this collection five stars. I really love Sylvia Plath. I love the way she writes. Um, I love how her short stories are so personal and they're so transparently about her life 
and reading them made me feel so much more for her as an author and I felt so deeply connected to her. I, like ever since I read The Bell Jar I felt really connected to her but reading this collection especially really deepened that connection I feel with her I think. I enjoyed the stories for what they were as well. I think they were really well done. Her essays were really interesting too and um, I just really love this. I can't really put into words why I loved it necessarily other than the whole connection thing but um yeah I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read in July was The Lord of Opium by Nancy Farmer. Um, this is a YA dystopian. It is a sequel to The House of the Scorpion. This follows um, our main character Mateo Alacran as he comes to terms with being the new lord of um, the drug country Opium and he also tries to free the Egypts which are these servants that serve the country that have these um, microchips implanted in their brains to basically pacify them and control them. I gave this book four stars. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I thought that it built believably on the world and on the characters. I really loved to see um, Matt's struggle with his identity and his relationship um, to this country that he's like running. I thought it was really believable the way he approached running the country as like literally a 14 year old boy and I thought it was just interesting to see that all pan out. I thought it built really well on the previous book and um, I definitely enjoyed it. I had a good time reading it. The next book that I read this month was Beastars Volume 1 by Parui Tagaki. I talked a little bit about this book in my summer book haul because I had already read it by the time that um, I made that video, but I'm going to expand on it a little bit here. This is basically a manga about a world of anthropomorphic animals that live in like human-like settings, like cities and schools and stuff like that. Um, it mainly follows this guy, um, this gray wolf named Magoshi, um, and he is basically, within this first volume, he is forced to confront his desire to prey on one of his herbivore classmates, because um, he's a carnivore, you know, he wants to eat animals. And this is all happening kind of in the context of um, a recent issue at his school where an alpaca student was basically brutally murdered and eaten by another carnivore who like we don't know the identity of. Um, I gave this manga four stars. <laughs> I really loved the world introduced in this first volume. I think that the whole predator prey dynamic is a really interesting thing to play with and like you know unlike Zootopia which is constantly compared to the series um, it really doesn't sanitize the whole predator prey thing like it really wants to analyze it deeply and analyze the social implications of living in a world like this and I really think that's cool. So I'm really excited to see how um, the author continues to build on this world in the future volumes and I'm really excited to continue with the series. The next book that I read this month was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is a um, adult fantasy about these four different Londons in these four different multiverses and um, about Kel, our main character, who is a magician who travels between um, the worlds uh, either carrying messages or he like also illegally smuggles like treasures from the different worlds. And then the story kicks off when he is basically set up with this like extremely dangerous and like destructive like talisman from Black London, which is um, the London that was kind of like devoured and destroyed by magic. I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed this one too. Um, like I said, I had a really good book month. I loved the fantasy world. I thought the magic system was really interesting, really different and unique. I really liked the plot line. I didn't connect as much with the characters as I kind of wanted to, which is why this is a four star instead of a five star but I do think the characters are like technically good I just didn't myself connect with them but I am definitely going to continue with the series and I'm excited to see where it goes. Next up is Beastars Volume 2 by Parvi Tagaki. Um, you know this is a manga. Um, it's the next volume in the Beastars series um, that I literally just talked about. This volume follows Legoshi as he um, meets the one um, herbivore that I talked about earlier that he has a desire to prey on and he meets her and she's this like cute little bunny girl named Haru and he starts to strangely develop um, like a crush on her. There's also like a school play going on and there's drama involving this guy Louis and without spoiling anything um, things start to get complicated. <laughs> um, I gave this volume four stars too. Um, I would say the same thing I said about the other one. Um, really interesting. Um, really love the world. Love the characters. 
I think they're, I like them. I think they're cool. Again, still going to keep reading this. I'm really excited to see how it continues and um, what's going to happen next. The next book I read is um, Passing for Human by Liana Fink. This is a graphic novel slash memoir a graphic memoir, if you will, about the author who is in search of her shadow. And the shadow is like capable of like talking to her and giving her advice. It's kind of like a metaphor. And uh, she basically discusses like along with her life, her parents' lives as well, and how they met each other and um, how they, how their lives like impacted her own. I gave this book five stars. Um, I thought it was very beautiful and I really connected with it in a way that I find hard to talk about. I also really liked the art style. I think it was so unique and I think it was a really good vessel to tell this story in. It's got kind of like a scribbly, um, not so like clean and organized vibe. Um, like all the little boxes are like hand drawn and I think that that is, um, really serves the story really well and just you know overall like I said it's kind of hard to talk to about why I really like this so much but um I don't know it did really move me it's very beautiful it's a very beautiful story I would say not just in the art style but um in the story itself as well and really enjoyed it really would recommend picking it up Next up is um, Doubt by John Patrick Shanley. This is a play about um, a priest who is accused um, by one of the nuns who works at the school associated with the priest church. Um, he's accused by this nun of molesting one of the boys that goes to that school. It's very short, so like I feel like I can't say anything more without spoiling anything, um, but I did give this play five stars um, as well. This is just a really compelling story, and especially right now, um, it feels so relevant. I think that this is also a great play for people who are maybe like new to plays and don't normally read them um, because it's super short. Um, like I said, it's only like 60 pages, I think. But it's also super engaging the entire time. The story is also really easy to understand as well. Some plays are like convoluted and confusing in the way that they tell their stories, especially if you're just reading them and not watching them. Um, but this one, the story is really clear. That's not to say that this isn't a good play because it really is like, um, you know, it won the Pulitzer Prize for drama and it well deserved that. I think it's definitely one of the best plays that I've ever read. But I also think that if you don't read a lot of plays and you want to get into reading them, this is a really good place to start. I'm planning on making a bigger video about um, recommendations for plays that I have and this is definitely going to make it into that video. So look out for that if you're interested. So the next book that I read this month was Go Ask Alice by um, Beatrice Sparks but she's writing as anonymous. This is a YA contemporary and it's told in diary format. Um, it's meant to sort of convey that the anonymous that's writing it is like actually the writer of this diary and they're like oh this diary was found um, and this is like a real story that happened but it's it's not. Um, it's just a lady writing a story and trying to be mysterious about it. Basically, this is about a girl who is um, given a drink laced with LSD um, at a party that she goes to, and then she sort of spirals into this like drug addiction that ruins her life. I gave this book two stars. This book was so blatant and obvious about its message, which is don't do drugs, it will ruin your life. And that was kind of getting really obnoxious for me to read. I also think that the writer did not have a very convincing 15 year old girl voice as like not a lot of adults do. So much so that I'm not sure how anybody ever believed that this was actually written by a 15 year old girl. I also thought that the ending of this book was like without spoiling anything it was just needlessly pessimistic and kind of stupid which fits into the entire vibe of the whole book also. Um, I think it's just a lot of like morbid and unsettling things happening for basically no reason except to communicate this whole don't do drugs, they will ruin your life message, which, um, you know, this book was written in, in the 1970s, so maybe that was more of like a thing that kids now then needed to hear. But I think that, I don't know, reading it now, it feels a little repetitive and redundant and, um, you know, not something that I would recommend for the teenagers of today, I guess. <laughs> so the next book that I read this month um, that I listened to as an audiobook that I checked out from the library is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is a YA contemporary about a HIV positive teenager 
who is navigating like her first relationship, um, new friendships. She's student directing the musical at her like brand new high school. And she um, has also these questions about sex and like telling the people in her life about her HIV status. I gave this book four stars. I absolutely adored it. It made me so happy, like just genuinely happy and like warmed at the heart. I thought the relationship in it was so cute. Um, I thought the characters were so wonderful, especially Simone, who is the main character. There's also so many diverse characters, both in terms of sexuality, and race, and I also really liked that as well. The next book that I read was um, The Best Short Stories of 2019, which is edited by Anthony Doerr. Um, this is a short story collection of short stories written in 2019 that Anthony Doerr really liked. <laughs> I did give this a star rating because I don't normally give these collections that I read star ratings, but I'll just go through some of my favorite stories that I tabbed here. One of them is Natural Light by Kathleen Alcott, Hellion by Julia Elliott, Bronze by Jeffrey Eugenides, Protozoa by Ella Martinson Gorham, um, Seeing or Shoddy by Nicole Krauss, The Plan by Sigrid Nunez, Natural Disasters by Alexis uh, Shadekin, and finally Wrong Object by Mona Simpson. I also wrote down that entire list on my Goodreads review of um, this book, so if you missed any of those names and you wanna check out some of those short stories, I really enjoyed all of them. Um, you can see the list on um, my Goodreads as well. Okay, home stretch. <laughs> Second to last book that I read this month was The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is a classic about a man who basically sells his soul um, to stay forever young. And then after he does that, his like sins and his like aging are like reflected on this portrait that his friend painted of him. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved the, all of the social commentary about beauty and human nature. I thought it was translated really well, really flawlessly into this story. I love um, the way that Oscar Wilde writes and um, how his characters are so compelling, his prose is so gorgeous. Cannot wait to read more from him because I've been wanting to read more Oscar Wilde and I thought, you know, I'd start with a picture of Dorian Gray because it's, you know, it's, you know, like the Oscar Wilde book, but I definitely am going to read more from him. I just loved this so, so much. And finally, um, the last book that I read this month that I just finished um, yesterday is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is a YA contemporary about a young woman um, named Georgia who is starting her first year of university and she's struggling to come to terms with her identity as asexual and aromantic. I gave this book five stars. Once I started it, I could not put it down. I wasn't even intending to read it in July. Like it was going to be the first book that I read in August, but I finished The Picture of Dorian Gray a little early, so I picked it up. I just read it all in like two sittings, basically. I connect so much with Alice Oseman's writing style. I think that she has this like unique view into teenagers and young adults um, in a way that I think that very few adult writers tend to have. And because of that, um, just the way that she tells her stories, I always feel so connected to them, so connected to her characters and her writing style. I also felt reading this book um, and based on like kind of what I saw Alice Oseman talking about on Tumblr and Twitter that she really put a lot of herself into this one and you could really tell and you could really feel it and it just made the story so much more impactful and so much more heartwarming and beautiful and um, this book just made me so happy. It's definitely a new favorite YA and um, I don't know. I just. I, what else is there to say, really? Like, it was gorgeous, and I love it. And I love Alice Oseman so much. <laughs> okay, so those are all 14 of the books that I read during the month of July. It was a lot, so if you watch to the end of this video, thank you so much for doing that. Um, you can leave a little <laughs> sign in the comments that you did if you want, um, and I would really appreciate that. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about and what you thought of them, or if you're intending to read any of them. Um, let me know what you read in July. Also be sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also find all of my social media links in the description. I talked a lot about my Goodreads in this video, so if you wanna check that out, links in the description. You can also follow me on Twitter and Tumblr. And that's pretty much it. I know I already said to subscribe, but be sure to do it again. I'm going to um, put out my August TBR right after this video. I was going to put it, like I was going to like, group it in with this video but then it was like 
is going to be way too long because I actually have a lot of books on my August TBR and I couldn't go through all of these and then all of those too because like the video would be a million hours long and I didn't want to push you all through that. <laughs> so um, yeah, subscribe so you can um, see when I release that video and thank you all so much for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.